Hello and welcome everybody to Halid RV 9650 pounds, the Eagle 29.5 BHDS. This is one of my personal favorite family fifth wheels because it does so many things so well. It's really, it's interesting because really all they did is they took the 25.5 REOK Eagle and just shoved a bunkhouse on the back of it. And as unappealing and, and not pretty as that sounds, it works extremely well. And what's cool is it has a big open feeling but it still gives us private bunks. It's one of the smallest ways I think you can uh, achieve private bunks and, and still have some decent living space and, a, and a, a pretty nice upper deck on one of these things. 9,650 pounds, question starts begging, can I half ton it? I don't generally recommend a half ton with one of these. I think it's a little bit too heavy on the pin box. I think by the time you load the cargo, it's more weight than most half tons should be towing. Obviously the name Eagle HT kind of attempts to insinuate half ton towing. I do try to be very real world about my towing guidelines. There are a very limited number of half tons that'll handle this, but not a whole heck of a lot of them. This has an absolute best in class, two plus three year RV warranty. Um, hot, cold camp rated, what people like to refer to as four seasons. She's solar ready, there's factory solar packages available, best in class, Goodyear tires, auto leveling, just a whole list of amazing qualities going into this. Now we've already had a full video of one of these come in through the 2021 season, but there's a couple updates on this one, mostly uh, in relation to the outside camp kitchen that I wanna point out, and a couple other tidbits that have changed since that was recorded. And anytime there's any sort of detail Decent, moderate, major change. I always try to go through and update my footage. If you appreciate the extra time and effort we put into here, because I could have just let the old stuff ride, it probably would have been fine. Hit that subscribe button, like our video, and leave us some comments. Let us know what do you think about this thing? What do you like? What do you dislike? Do you have any questions? And I'll do my best to help you out. In the meantime, let's get going. Now we're not going to see a whole heck of a lot of updates on the interior here, but uh, I, I don't think I'm going to skip any corners because, first of all, somebody might not have seen any of our previous footage on one of these. And secondly, there's a lot of details here, like the way that it's completely carpetless. You see how Eagle's standard dinette here, it's what I call a no knee knocker dinette. It's a dream dinette system. It's actually one of my favorite types of dinettes because I am a long-legged, clumsy dude. I hit my knees. My shins are always banged up. I've always got some sort of thing healing, some, some collision on my shins all summer. I've always got a bump on my forehead somewhere because I'm tall and clumsy and I don't pay attention to things. So anytime that I see something like that where it's just convenient and, and comfortable for a taller person like me, I'm all about it. Not to mention it's easy to put it up and down into the uh, sleeper position. Um, and getting rid of all the carpet here, all Jayco laminated RVs are now completely carpetless flooring, which is great. Um, we are looking at the modern farmhouse decor. That's the, the lights and the grays here with the little uh, kind of distressing uh, sort of uh, kind of look to them. Now, if you're not into all that, because I know there's some people say, ooh, I don't like that. It feels dirty. Some people say, ooh, I like it. It's light and bright. You know, there's there's different strokes for different folks. This is also available in brown on brown, and it's very rich and warm and welcoming called American Tradition. So if this jelly ain't your jam, you just let us know and, and we'll uh, open a new jar for you. I don't know what I'm going for. Anyway, sealed edge counters all the way through here. Not just the kitchen but you're dining and everywhere. So again, a clumsy idiot like me, I can spill stuff and it's not gonna cause any issues. Now I mentioned how uh, this is an open design, but a private bunk and that in a way it doesn't make sense. But if you take a note here, you see how that is like a giant sliding barn door. Now what we've got outfitted here today is the optional theater seating and the standard booth dinette. You can also get freestanding tables here instead of the booth and it comes with two folding chairs and then two all the time chairs essentially. And the standard sofa is actually a trifold high to bed. But the way that I kind of see this one, and, and this is just my opinion, we can get one built however it works for you if this isn't your preference. You've got enough sleeping with those big double bunks in the back. Um, isn't it kind of nice right here to have a theater seat directly across from an easy no neck wrecker entertainment center right there? That's something that I always like that really speaks to me. By the way, quick little note, did you know that those refrigerator faceplates were quick and easy exchange? They literally just slide in and out. There's almost like a stainless looking kind of backer behind it. That's how the, uh, the Furion fridge always matches the decor that it's placed into because you can literally use the exact same cabinet faces on it. I think that's pretty cool. Now, taking a look over here, let me take a seat. This is the TV in just the standard seating position. 
Uh, that's without the TV pivoted whatsoever. Very easy to see, very comfortable. It's at head level, so you're not really cranking your neck up because above that is just a huge chunk of storage. Real quick though, just above that electric space heating fireplace, or as I like to call it, the titsy toaster, you just got your, your Furion Bluetooth stereo unit and a handy little pocket for some entertainment upgrades. You want to add a Blu-ray or something? You can. And notice how Jayco actually takes the time to run the HDMI wiring for you. Now, the TV can pivot toward the dinette or the kitchen, or it can pivot away to reveal a little bit of a hidden pantry tainment center. Well, not a little bit, frankly. That's pretty deep. Plus, just cavernous storage up top. Now, you might need long arms. You might need uh, one of those little handy grabber things uh, that like my grandmother uses to get stuff off the top shelf at the grocery store so she doesn't have to ask for help. I get it. It's way up there, but at least it's there. It's storage. It's not wasted space. That is a larger 22-inch oven, by the way. So if you really are cooking up a storm for your family, you can make more than just cookies and biscuits in here. And check that out. The full drawers below uh, both of those right there. You know, a thought I had too is if you wanted to, you could very easily pop one of those out of there or maybe modify it in some way to be a, a handy little holder space for pet, like pet dishes maybe, or maybe like a little cat bed, litter box, something down there. Any pet campers out there, what, what do you think about that idea? And just like an infomercial here, but wait, there's more. We've got plywood drawers to the floors going on with a little phone charging station above that. That's a USB plug in there. Handy little spot to keep her tucked out of the way, but always readily uh, accessible and at hand. Now, the uh, stainless sink under the cutting board and rollaway drying rack right there, well, there is one. I, I, I phrased that very poorly. Apologies. <laughs> but uh, what was I getting at? Oh, the peninsula style counter here. We are going to get to see this RV in what I call road mode in just a few minutes, all closed up. The peninsula countertop will certainly kind of cut things off and, and uh, make it a little more difficult to get to the refrigerator. Not impossible, as I will show you. But if it wasn't there, you'd have like almost no, uh, what I want to say, counter space for prep space. Now, you might have noticed when we looked at the seating in the down sleeper position, all the windows have like basically blackout shades. Uh, they're also all full, uh, all fully framed out. There we go. God bless America. And thank you, Mr. Eagle, for keeping us legal. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm going for there either. Now, you might have noticed that handy little coat closet there hidden behind the one door. The other mirror is not a door. It's basically just there um, to help complete the visual decoration. And it's actually going to act as a bit of an access panel to some th some plumbing things in the uh, bathroom space. Oh, oh, crap. There's a little thing behind this peninsula counter that you haven't seen yet. Because without this, you wouldn't be able to get to some of the storage. Now, some additional household outlets in that mount right there. That is a double USB plug charger that is also a mounting point for a Furion lit portable Bluetooth speaker. I've actually got a separate video on one of those. I'll try to remember to put the link for that in the video description if you're curious. It's actually a pretty cool device. I was sort of like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And then I got one and uh, now I got two. So if that tells you kind of how I feel about it. So the, again, we've got that sliding privacy door here um, and a very gentle staircase, very wide platform. So it's not like, uh, you know, the little kids don't need a lot of help. They can very easily, like, even crawl themselves up and down there, which is nice. And bunk rooms in a lot of RVs have absolutely jack squat for storage. And uh, that is just not acceptable. I mean, you kids occupy so much space. It's insane. Anyone, like, when, when it was just me and my wife, and then we had our one child, she began to occupy two-thirds of the house with all her stuff. It made no sense. <laughs> TV hookups in the upper bunk there. You notice, too, there's, I would call it like a headboard shelf, but I guess it's a sideboard little pocket storage organizer there. Double thickness bunk mats. And, and if you look where they don't expect you to look, sometimes you find some interesting things on manufacturers. Like with the Jayco, you find plywood. You don't find particle board, OSB, or beaver puke. <laughs> the dangler. That is this thing's technical name down at Jayco. That's the official marketing name, The Dangler. But what it's telling us here is best in class bunk ratings. So with every Jayco, your bunks are rated for 300 pounds per sleeping space. It's a double sleeper. So we multiply that, we get ourselves a 600 pound rated upper bunk. And there's so much construction be uh, under the lower bunk. I just don't understand how that could be an issue. 
all those windows uh, open for airflow. And what's also cool is each bed has one of those little side pockets and its own individual lights, but you can still flick the main lights on and off. And there's a totally separate switch for that little light down there uh, so that if someone is, if it is nighttime and they got to make a little potty run, they can see the steps just enough without bothering everybody else. If you want to, you could sync your phone to this, but you don't have to do all of this. You don't have to go digital. One of my favorite things on this RV is that Jayco still just left us light switches. And did you notice that it's not just all or nothing? You can actually still individually control different zones in this RV. That's I think that's the outside light because this is uh, living, this is bedroom and hallway effectively. So it's little things like that are just handy. Now, I'll talk more about this outside. There's a factory solar package you can get. That's where the charge controller is going to be located. And that's where the wiring is run through the walls down from the, uh, uh, the roof line. Now, they have changed their bathroom arrangement on this a little bit as compared to some previous seasons. Uh, first of all, uh, I, I think you might actually have more leg room now than you used to. Another thing I really like about this is you got that larger radius corner shower, which actually gives bigger people like me elbow room. It's tall enough that I can stand in there and I'm not knocking my noggin on everything all the time. See another one of those handy little evening night lights. It'll make that whole shower glow so you can see what you're doing because that's not a time when you want to be guessing. Nobody wants to be using the bathroom by sonar and then find out in the morning whether they did a good job or not. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, Max Air event fan up top here, but a different kind. It's actually, uh, we'll, we'll look at it again on the roof, but this is how you open and close the vents when we get up there. So it's basically, it's a different kind of rain blocker. Now, uh, over here, we have what I like to call the backlit morning mirror. I've had some viewers refer to it as the makeup mirror. Uh, that viewer might have been my Uncle Gary. Uh, he, you know, uh, is in a Kiss tribute band. So uh, that that's kind of the explanation of a lot of things that you may have heard me say about Uncle Gary. <laughs> Sealed countertops, again, all the way through. And even the backlit morning mirror, even that is on a do totally different switch. Um, you've also got, you see, a magnet holdback for the uh, sliding privacy door here in the bathroom. And I'll give you a, a handy little pro tip. Um, so first of all, for travel, it locks in place. Now you go like this, and I get it, the magnet's going to pretty much hold it in place. But what if one of the kids who hasn't quite learned manners yet just walks up and starts pulling it? My recommendation, get a very simple little, um, it's called a U-latch. And uh, I'll see if I can find uh, a link in a video description, and I'll leave a link in the video description rather. You could add a tiny little latch right here, or you could add it over there and create a positive lock system so that you can't just push the door open, uh, you know, and uh, have a little bit of an embarrassing situation. Now I realized I forgot to show you the linen cabinet here in the bedroom bathroom combo slide. That's giving us a lot of storage space that this model otherwise just wouldn't have up here. And um, it's got another one of those sliding privacy doors. So that tip I just gave you about using a positive latch system, if you want to disable this door for maximum bedroom privacy at your destination, all it takes is a simple little latch that you can put right on the door or over here in the wall or on the wherever it fits for you wherever it makes sense all you got to do is remember to disengage it and then slide it closed when you reach your uh, or uh when, when you're leaving when you're departing effectively now what we're looking at here is a 70 by 80 king bed upgrade the standard here is going to be a 60 by 80 true queen it absolutely is bossy in this room. It eats up a lot of space. You can still walk around it. And I love that big window over there. Oh man, I love that. Just like I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm demonstrating that you can walk all the way around the bed. Now, around the sides over here. Yes, it is rather tight. And you're going to be doing a little bit of a travel trailer two-step. And when the slide closes, you'll see that it will actually slide all the way over the top of that stand right there. So... Uh, why, why would we make this so tight here? Because there's some people who would rather be comfortable for eight hours rather than worry about making a bed for eight minutes. Now that doesn't explain, some people prefer more room to walk around the bed. That's no problem. When you have a king bed like this, all you have to do is swap in the queen mattress that you want that a lot of people are going to do anyway. And then all you have to do is just trim down the decking under here. But if you had a queen and you wanted to go up to a king, you have to rebuild the decking if you do it right anyway. So this makes it easier for everybody to kind of get exactly what they want. Now, 
Uh, if you go, I don't care. I want one with the queen. I want it from the factory that way. No problem. We'll get you one. Notice how there's the full storage down there. And one other thing I want to mention, whether it's a king or a queen, the side stands and the cabinets, they do not change. The only thing that changes is the size of the mattress and then just the, uh, the width of the decking on that plywood right there. Now, something else I haven't mentioned, Eagle HTs, all Eagle products are all 50 amp standard. On the HTs, a 15,000 BTU Whisper Ducted Coleman Quiet Air Conditioner is standard. You can add, you can sacrifice that vent to upgrade to a second 15,000 BTU factory installed air if you're so inclined. And since it's all prepped and ready, uh, let's say you wanted to buy this RV, but you're like, man, I, I live in Arkansas and the humidity, you don't even understand, Yankee boy. I get that. I can respect that for sure. I've spent some time in Georgia. I, uh, I, I fully understand what it gets like down there in the summers. And uh, one air is not going to cut it. No, sir. So being able to add a second air here for you before it leaves, that's the kind of stuff we can do. I'm going to turn you around like a record, baby, just a bit. So that give you kind of an idea if you're laying on the bed. This is sort of what you're going to be looking at. You'd be a little further away, but you've got TV hookups right on that wall. Dedicated bedroom light switch, because once again, if you're like, I don't want to go Bluetooth. I don't need more to do on my phone. You don't have to. You can just flick the light switch. Closing down the slides, taking a look at her in road mode. Mad Max style right here. Cracker barrel testing kind of stuff. With the king bed, you see... Can you still get in the bed? Yes, the mattress does kind of go under that overhang. So I guess in road mode, it's kind of a queen, kind of a king. One of those things where you ever uh, put a question mark at the end of a sentence to kind of indicate that your voice is going up at the end, even though it's not a question. And when people ask you, why did you do that? You're like, because it feels right. <laughs> now, um, this is something I had previously reported incorrectly due to an oversight on our video for a 24RE. Now, this is the same living room uh, as a 25.5REOK, uh, -E a 24RE, and this one, the 29.5BHDS. In my last video on a 24RE, I, I forgot I had cracked the slide a little bit to put the dinette in the down position, and I had misreported that there was more room at the end of the dinette with a booth than there is with a freestanding table. You can see that's not necessarily the case. Now, like those other two floor plans, if you do a little Luke Knee Walker kind of job right here over the dinette, you can get around the kitchen island or peninsula or whatever. You can get to the fridge, you can get to the drawers, but you do have to do the Luke Knee Walker method, which is a technical term I learned in RV Nerdology. And really, the biggest reason I'm bringing you this, this entire reshot footage today is essentially just for the little update that they've applied to their camp kitchen. They've removed that slide open drawer style capital grill, and what they've gone into here is a full blackstone griddle. So, uh, where is the griddle, you're asking? Well, that's actually one of the other reasons I want to put this footage together today. Jayco's made a huge commitment partnership with Blackstone, and just like this, they have restructured their outside kitchens on almost everything that they build to standardize the use of a Blackstone griddle. Some models are 17 inch, some are 22, it just depends. But Blackstone's having a hard time keeping up with those currently. They'll get it ironed out. In the meantime, though, it's not like you lose out and you go without. So what'll happen is, let's say it's a case like this where they were short effectively you will get a voucher with your Jayco that you fill out you send it into Blackstone and as soon as they're available Blackstone sends the missing griddle directly to you so if you're a Halo RV customer from Texas Arizona California Florida wherever because we have coast to coast nationwide customers absolutely and if you weren't aware of that yes we do deliver just about anywhere or you're welcome to pick up your RV and save a ton of money off of shipping costs it's crazy but uh, I don't expect you to drive all the way from Kentucky just to get a griddle that's, that's silly. So Blackstone sends it right to your house. Nobody misses out, everybody wins. So a couple other cool things here. Along with the standardization of a Blackstone camp kitchen, Jayco has also begun applying the J-Port to a ton of their models. And, and basically, ladies and gentlemen, this is effectively like a two inch receiver hitch that just sticks off the side of your trailer. And in case you're wondering what kind of weight it can hold, take a look at the upper right corner of the screen right now. That is two grown men and a griddle standing on this exact type of platform that we're looking at right here. 
Uh, it's it's very heavy duty. There's a whole world of accessories that could go on those. And if it wasn't griddling, there's things like um, trash can receptacles or just stools, benches. There's, of course, my favorite, the bumper dumper. Um, you know, there's a whole bunch of different ways that you could utilize this. And by getting rid of that capital grill, we've gained an additional rolled steel uh, or, or galvanized, rather, rolled steel drawer out here. Now, because we've got those bunks, they had to get a little creative with this camp kitchen, but it's actually weirdly one of my favorite. I think it's one of those things where it kind of happened accidentally, but they looked at it and went, well, hey, that's pretty awesome. Because first of all, there's just good counter space in here, a real sink that actually drains. And because this is not mounted in a slide out, it's actually down here low enough that you can use the sink. So many outside kitchens have a sink that is mounted like way up high, or if you wanna wash your hands, you look like you're an Olympic diver jumping into a swimming pool. It's stupid. Well, you don't have that here. This is also a quick release, so if you wanna convert that kinda into like a little camp shower sprayer utility cleaner, you can do that too. You might have noticed there's a big giant spot up here. You wanna go severe, like game day bucket go boom out here. Put a big old like 40, 50 inch maybe flat screen up here. You could do that. Household outlets, USB plugs, a mount for Furion lit Bluetooth portable, uh, port porticable, porticable, yep, porticable speaker. <laughs> and those things are legit, by the way. I actually own two of them. I have one that just sits in my uh, above my shower because they're water resistant, so I can sit there and just rock out to music after a long day. And uh, I, I've got another one that I, I just I use for my mobile purposes because what's also cool is not only is it a Bluetooth soundbar, it's a flashlight, and it's a uh, or Bluetooth speaker as it were. It's also a power bank. I can charge my phone off it if for some reason I'm without power somewhere. Now the one thing I noticed on this, and in one of my videos I, I failed to recognize one of the cool functions here, is if you take a look at this, the drawer is kind of overlapping the Blackstone mount. However, Jayco has developed. A, a method here. It's what I like to call bi-directional variable orientation technology. So this thing can face northwest, east, south, all in the same house right here. And uh, bonus points for anybody in the comment section that remembers that old song lyric. Oh man, that takes me back. Anyway, notice though, there wasn't a, a, a fridge in the camp kitchen or really any sort of storage. That is all hiding behind the electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster over here. So you've almost got like a miniature outdoor pantry at sort of situation. And a this is what I, I think when a lot of people say I'm looking for a large camp kitchen, very often I think what they're referring to is a, a larger refrigerator versus the little college dorm size fridge. Although I guess that is kind of a college dorm size fridge. One other little update I noticed on this that some of the previous generations this floor plan did not have is the magnet hold back on that refrigerator door. That thing used to constantly swing and sway in the breeze and bang against everything. It was not my favorite experience. You see the uh, leveling jack back here. Uh, they have standardized the four point automatic electric leveling system on these. Of course, we've got our best in class Goodyear endurance radials rated for up to 87 miles an hour right there. Uh, the uh, Moride CRE 3000 uh, shock dampener here. That is point number two of their four star ride and handling package. We have Goodyear's, we have more ride suspension. We, you see we've got, uh, they, they ride on Dexter axles and you see actual grease Zerk equipped wet bolt fasteners. The idea there is if you're gonna really tow and go a lot, you can uh, keep everything lubricated. And something else, I don't know if I've ever remembered to talk about this before. It's not a thing I can visibly easily show, but Eagles have started um, standardizing more prep for like additional shock suspension packages. So if you wanna do some aftermarket suspension upgrades to soften the, the ride and handling even more, you now have the prep mounts to do that without fabricating stuff. Um, the uh, other thing here is what I like to call Eagle doing Eagle things. Cause like you see double entry handles, that additional handle so that you always have something to grab onto. That is one of the things that they're, they're really well known for. And of course, I mentioned before that best in class two plus three year warranty with allowances for full time RVing. Uh, there's not a whole lot of other people, even in fifth wheels and especially in this class. Keystone Cougar is just about the only other one that has it. Actually, Cougar beat Eagle to the full time RVing warranty. And then Eagle said, fine, mine's two years instead of one. How do you like that? And then they both have a three year structural. 
Eagle doing eagle things. Well, really, this is just Jayco. The way that they always put a, a full radiant barrier along the entirety of their, their bathroom deck. And that's a nice uh, superior double-sided thermal foil. It provides a little bit better superior function. There's motion lights on both sides of the pass-through, so I can see myself coming or going, I suppose. Uh, we've already got a camp kitchen with outside TV hookups, but in case you really want to make that game day bucket go boom, you have a second outside TV hookup station right there as well. Now, if you want to hook your phone up to the Bluetooth system, you can do things like operate that awning, uh, your slide, some of our lighting remotely, which is a handy dandy pretty cool feature. And uh, something that is not equipped on this RV, but once again, I try to give you all the information I can, is the Eagle Off-Grid package. Now, um, what that will do is it will generate or prep the RV and add a third 30 pound propane tank. So you're getting 50% more propane. Weirdly, Eagle does not offer a factory generator. They only offer gen prep and additional propane. Now, on top of that, all Jayco laminated RV, actually all Jayco towable RVs are roof and side solar ready and they do offer uh, various factory solar packages. So uh, you could get like the 190 watt uh, package, you could add an additional 190 watt panel if you want and go up to 380, all with just the existing factory wiring. And no matter what, you're always going to be set and ready for up to four batteries in that front compartment. So if you're looking for a park camp experience, it's got it. If you're looking for an off-grid experience, you can make it do that, which is kind of cool. Another thing that hit the uh, HTs in the 21 season is the standardization of their turning point hitch. They've been offering variations of that over the years, but they finally said, you know what? There's more people with short bed pickups hauling these things. We want to make sure that it's short bed friendly, and that turning point hitch is one of the ways that they can accomplish that. You notice that they're also prepped for slide awnings. That's kind of the thing. It's not, not only is this really heavily equipped, arguably one of the most heavily equipped things in its class, you can take it further if that's your preference. Enclosed, uh, protected, heated docking center in that galvanized rolled steel protected area right there. Uh, once again, these are what people would refer to as four seasons. I greatly dislike that statement because people tend to associate that with all weather. They're all weather and four seasons camping are not the same thing. Uh, RVs are not made for what people might refer to as all-weather camping. If it's going to be Alaska during a polar vortex, there are exactly zero RVs made for something like that. You just, you have to remember that. But unfortunately, like maybe you're, you're hearing this and you're going, well, yeah, obviously. Well, it's not obvious to some people, which is why sometimes I like to break little things like that down. Now, under that um, step platform in the bunk room, we just got ourselves a big old trunk. And, and, I, and I take... No pleasure in saying this. I, well, I mean, that's that's a lie. I, I take great pleasure in saying this. You can put a lot of junk in that trunk right there. <laughs> uh, we are not just backup camera ready. We're also side view camera ready. And another safety feature that you get on all Jayco travel trailers and fifth wheels is their exclusive J-Smart lighting system. So you're, uh, basically, if you flip on your turn signals, all of the clearance lights along the side of this RV over here, if you're making a right-hand turn, blink with your tail light. You also have reverse lighting. Uh, that's the white elements in the tail lights, as well as uh, up above the camera prep. That is cascading light behind you, so you can see what you're doing. Very handy if you're backing in or out at night. Not to mention, during the day, they, they light right up. So if you're at a gas station and you get pinched in by some goofball who doesn't respect what towing is like, you can still get yourself out of there. Uh, down here, by the way, uh, HT, Eagle HT, was the first uh, mainstream fifth wheel to standardize a 3,000 pound towing hitch with 300 pound tongue limit, safety chain hooks, and four way wiring harness. So if you want to add uh, a little boat or a small enclosed trailer, uh, maybe you just want to use it for a bike rack here in a bunkhouse or uh, a tray for an external portable generator or something if you don't want to go on board because you want the storage. These things are so handy and they give you so much function. Couple quick things here for you on the roof. That's that rain blocker vent fan that I told you about. That little white hockey puck over there, that is actually like a, uh, it's an attic vent. Like in your house, it's residential code. You have to have vents and air gaps and things in your construction so it doesn't build up too much heat. You don't have to do that in RVs. I'm very fortunate at Halet RV, our, our fifth wheel builders that we have, they all do that as a practice when you don't have a laminated roof anyway. When you do have a laminated roof like a Rockwood, it's not the same kind of critical deal. 
Um, but it, it just lets so much heat out of the roof structure in the blazing summer sun, it's incredible. And you see that black plug right there. If you want to, that's where you can start adding solar panels and you can add one, you can add two from the factory, or you can do some upgrades. And uh, depending on how crazy you feel like getting, there's a blank canvas waiting for you up here. So there you have it guys. Like I said, not a whole lot has changed since the last time we recorded this, but it, those th there's, there's people who sometimes see our videos and then they see the pictures and they say, well, that's not what the video shows. And I think most people understand that the video isn't necessarily guaranteeing you, here's exactly what the RV looks like. But people have really come to depend on our channel for getting all of that up-to-date information and I always want to do my best to put that out and again your feedback truly drives what I do here like closing the slides things like that your suggestions keep me going so if there's something else I can do for you let me know and if you haven't done so already take a quick second please uh, hit the like button on the video subscribe and follow along with us here we're family owned and operated and we'd love the chance to work with you when we're ready and we don't do those pesky hidden dealer fees we'll leave those to the big box stores so take care stay safe have fun Happy Halo Camping, everyone. Real quick, though, just above that electric.